Praise the Lord. Everybody happy? Get a good night's rest. Somebody say camp meeting 31. I didn't hear that. Say it again. <laughs> How many has enjoyed the ministry so far? Hallelujah. And you're going to enjoy it the rest of the way. Amen. I said you're going to enjoy it the rest of the way because God has anointed every speaker. With the anointing, you have to enjoy it. If you don't enjoy the anointing, you're not where you need to be. Hallelujah. Let's stand and get ready to worship. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Father, we praise you today. We give you honor. Thank you for what you've done and what you're going to do today, Jesus. We praise you and honor you because we know when we put our trust in you that you will never fail us. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Give him a hand clap. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. I mean, it's just glad to be back in the house of the Lord this morning. Hallelujah. Just nonstop. And that's what I like. Just staying in the presence nonstop. Isn't that awesome? Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. They were singing an old song when we got in here. And I was like, well, I kind of had that in my mind. So I guess I'm just going to go on with it. Hallelujah. I mean, knows we're on that highway to heaven. Hallelujah. None's going to walk up there except the pure in heart. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Give the Lord a hand clap of praise tonight. Today. Hallelujah. Well, it's a highway to heaven. Oh, none can walk up there. But the pure in heart. It's a highway to heaven. I'm a walking up the king's highway. Oh, it's a highway to heaven. Oh, none can walk up there. Oh, but the pure in heart. It's a highway to heaven. Oh, I'm a walking up the king's highway. Well, my way gets brighter and my load gets lighter just walking up the King's Highway. And there's joy in knowing that with Him I'm going. I'm walking up the King. Come on, church. Oh, it's a highway to heaven. Oh, none can walk up there. Oh, but the pure in heart, it's a highway to heaven. I'm a walking up the king's highway. Well, I don't have to worry, and I don't have to hurry. I'm a walking up the king's highway. Oh, Christ walks beside me. I got angels to guide me. I'm a walking up the king's highway. Come on, hallelujah. Oh, it's a highway to heaven. Oh, none can walk up there. Oh, but the pure in heart. It's a highway to heaven. I'm a walking up. Go ahead, hun, sing it. Yes, it's a highway to heaven. None can walk up there. Why don't you do that part again? I like it.
Well, if you're not walking, just start while I'm talking. Walking up the King's Highway. And there'll be a blessing, and you'll be possessing. Just walking up the King's Highway. Oh, it's a highway to heaven. Oh, none can walk up there. Oh, but the pure in heart. It's a highway to heaven. I'm a walking up the King's Highway. Well, I don't have to worry, and I don't have to hurry. I'm a walking up the King's Highway. Oh, Christ walks beside me. I got angels to guide me. I'm a walking up the King's Highway. Well, it's a highway to heaven. Oh, none can walk up there. Oh, but the pure in heart. It's a highway to heaven. I'm a walking up the King's Highway. Well, if you're not walking, just start while I'm talking. Woo! Walking up the King's Highway. Oh, yeah. oh, there'll be a blessing and you'll be possessing. Just walking up the King. Go ahead, hun, sing it. Yeah. It's a highway, highway up to heaven. Let's do it one more time. Oh, it's a highway to heaven. Oh, none can walk up there. Oh, but the pure in heart. It's a highway to heaven. I'm a walking up the king's highway. Come on, church. I mean, those were on that highway. Hallelujah, hallelujah. I said, hello, my yata. Hallelujah, hallelujah. I'm glad I'm on my way to heaven this morning. Yeah. Woo, woo. Hello, shut. Somebody go ahead and praise him. I said, somebody go ahead. Just thank him that you're able to be in the house of the Lord. It's a highway to heaven. I'm a walking up the king's highway. Well, my way gets brighter and my load gets lighter. Just walking up the king's highway. Lost my word. I'm a walking up the king's highway. Well, it's a highway to heaven. Oh, none can walk up there. Oh, but the pure in heart. It's a highway to heaven. I'm a walking up. The Let's do that one again. Well, my way gets brighter and my load gets lighter. Just walking up the King's Highway. There's joy in knowing that with him I'm going. I'm a walking up. Woo! Well, it's a highway to heaven. Oh, none can walk up there. Oh, but the pure in heart. It's a highway to heaven. I'm a walk. Go one more time, hun. I'm 
walking up the king's highway. Come on and worship the Lord this morning. Oh, in the presence of the Lord so good. Oh, we just want to lift him up and magnify his name this morning. I'm thankful that I can go to him. Hallelujah. It seems like every message this week has been concerning the body of Christ and the church. How that we're going to make it through. How many knows we're going to make it? We may have temptations. We may have trials, we may have battles, and we may have storms. But Sister Ann, I've got my mind made up, I'm going to make it. Hallelujah. And when I get in trouble, I just call on the name of the Lord. I just call on the name of Jesus. There may be times that I can't even get the word out. But you know, I'm glad he knows my mind. He knows my heart. If all I can do is just think it. Hallelujah. He sees my thoughts. Hallelujah. And he knows when I'm calling upon him. Hallelujah. 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 I claim the blood that Jesus shed on Calvary. Come on, church. Those precious blood stains were made there for you and me. For all my sin, all my sickness, and my pain. When I need healing, oh, I just claim those precious blood stains. Let's do that again. Oh, I claim the blood Jesus shed on Calvary. Those precious blood stains. Were shed there for you and me. For all my sin, all my sickness, and all my pain. When I need healing, oh, I just claim those precious blood stains. I have a source of strength when I am weak. It leads me through when life is pressing me. And you see, I have a source of power from above I'm covered over oh by his shield of love and I claim the blood Jesus shed on Calvary those prayers Blood stains, he shall have a there. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. For all, for all my sin, all my sickness, and all my pain. When I need healing, I just claim those precious blood stains. And I do not know how others make it through. They don't seem to go to Calvary as I do. But I know there, that's where I know the healing. 
that healing cleansing stream it still flows and with his peace only only his redeemed can know and I claim the blood Jesus shed on Calvary those precious blood stains were shed there for you and me for all my sin all my sickness and my pain when I need healing I just claim those precious blood stains I just want to do this one again you see I have a source of strength when I am weak and it leads me through every time life comes pressing me Woo! and I have a source of power from above and I covered over by a shield of love. I just want to say something. So I know it's been a few years now, and I may have mentioned this, but I won't ever forget. Brother Compton, how the Holy Ghost. When my brother showed up at a church service to let me know that my mom and dad had been in an accident. I didn't know at that time, Sister, Sister Frankie, that they'd both been taken out to meet the Lord at the same time. But you know, in the long, when I look back, I realize it was a blessing. They were on their way to church. They still had pretty good, you know, their life was still pretty good. They were able to drive. They were 83 and had served the Lord all their life. And so when it comes their time to go, they got to go together. But for me, it was a devastating time. For me and my brother and my siblings, it was a devastating time. And I was telling Sister Tootsie, I said, you know what? I found out just how great and how, how, how awesome the Holy Ghost is. Because at the viewing, when the two caskets was laying there, when the viewing was, and there were so many people that came, we were there for like, standing like four hours for people to come through. But when people would try to talk to me, Sister Ann, the Holy Ghost came upon me. I wasn't able to talk in English. I would just go into tongues and start speaking, speaking in tongues because of the power of the Holy Ghost. That's how I realized how great that He is when you need comfort, when you need strength. Hallelujah. Many people have gone through similar things. And we realize just how great that source of power is. If you don't have the Holy Ghost today, you need help the Holy Ghost. Because He's the only one that's going to take you through. He's going to keep you. He's going to give you that source of strength that you need. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So I claim the blood of Jesus. I speak the name of Jesus. Because it's, it's the only thing that I have today that's going to carry me. I can look to other things, but they're not going to carry me. But the blood of Jesus and the name of Jesus will carry me through. So one more time, we'll sing the chorus and the pastor can come on. Hallelujah. I claim the blood of Jesus shed on Calvary. Those precious blood stains were shed there for you and me. For all my sin, all my sickness, and all my pain. When I need healing, I just claim. 
those precious blood stains. When I need healing, I just claim those precious blood stains. I tell you, man, such a merciful God. You know, I, I, I like real Christians. I don't like those kinds that come to church and when they get back in the car, they take the mask off, throw it up on the dash to the next service. I like the ones that can get up and say, you know, I've been through the, the floods and, uh, you know, I've been through the fire and the floods and, and they've even tried to drag me through some mud. Amen. Praise God. Hallelujah. But I'm still here. And this late, next lady, she's a patriarch, has such a wonderful impact on my life. I know we mess with her, me and Brother Compton, we pick out a play with her and everything. But Sister Betty Jo Eustace, Amen. I was telling somebody the other day about her testimony. And how when this building wasn't no bigger than a Cracker Jack box. But she preached and gave that testimony. And I sat on the front row. And how it's ministered to me all these years. A mighty, mighty woman of God. Sister Betty Jo, would you come up and sing a song for us this morning? She told me, she, she tells everybody, she said, you know that boy? She said, he was hard to preach to. She said, because everything I'd say, where's that at? Where's that at? She said, I had to prove everything to him, you know. But you know, I'm going to tell y'all something. I'm, I'm blessed. Because when I was being ordained to minister, Pastor Larry, there was women in there too, not just men, but women ordained me too, praise God. I was, in a, I, was in a, I was in a meeting one time, and they were having a debate about, whether, about women preachers and everything. And this man, he didn't believe in women preachers, and this one didn't. And they went on and on. They come to me, and I was the chairman of the meeting. And they said, well, what do you think, Pastor Sims? I said, I don't believe in women preachers. <laughs> and that Baptist man, I could see him. He just chest his spoke out. I said, but you know what I do believe in? I believe in Holy Ghost preachers. I said, and I don't care if they're wearing a shirt or a skirt, amen. I said, bless God, I said, because I had just as many women push me into it as I did men push me into it. That lady over there, Sister Frankie, she prophesied in my whole ministry, Brother Compton, drug me down to Camden, him and Debbie. I'd follow him around. You know, I'm blessed to get to carry his water. And uh, she called me out. And I had old Derek in my arms, the one y'all saw lay down last night with my son. And she said, God's going to use you, young man. She began to tell me everything I had done before I come to the Lord. I said, this has got to be God because nobody knows that. Nobody knows that. She said, and that young boy that you're holding in your arms, she said, he'll be exactly what his father wants him to be when he grows up. And the only things I ever prayed, Brother Larry, was that... He'd be a man of God, and he'd be successful. And God's given me even more praise. Amen. This lady here, she never spanked me physically, but she spanked me a few times, amen? But I'll tell you one thing. If it was coming out of her mouth to me, it might as well have been coming out of God's mouth. Amen? I remember old Ruby Truth. Well, don't you wish she was still here today? Bobby Compton gave me a beautiful uh, powdered blue suit. They used to use it in their group when they played. And he, he told me one time he got me in the group. I thought I was going to be in the group to sing. He made me the roadie. I had to haul the equipment while they played around and everything, you know. And I thought I was going to be a great gospel singer. I, but I was a good roadie, though. Amen. But Bobby took me in there and he said, I got a suit if you don't mind. I'd like to give it to you. Gave me a beautiful powdered blue suit. 
man, I come to church that night and I still have my long hair, sister. Yeah, you know, I used to wear my bell bottoms and wear them shirts. They had them chucked out arms and the thing, and I had my one medallion on and my one hair on my chest. I thought I was God's. I thought I was God's gift. To, And I told God before I come to that meeting that night, I said, Lord, there's only two things I ask, that you would anoint me like you did King David, and that you will just tell me that you love me. They came down the aisle, one of them told me, said, you know, God said to tell you that you're the apple of his eye. That man sang a song yesterday morning. I told him that wasn't the song. That was my life he sang. And they had me sitting in a chair. And Ruby Truth, oh, Ruby. She said, Brother Sims, can I obey God? And I said, yes. And they didn't have a little bottle of oil. That would have been nice. They had a, a thing of oil. Somebody was saying the other day about five-gallon buckets of oil. You know. She told me, she said, can I obey God? I said, oh, please do. Please do. She's the one that said it. She said, God said to tell you that you the apple of his eye. She took that whole thing because I was the last one in the line sitting at the table. She dumped it all over me. My long, beautiful hair. I had all in my ears and my neck. That beautiful powder suit, I never got to wear it again, brother. <laughs> she all it good. Then this one told me how she was on the way to kill somebody when she got saved. I said, well, you know what? That one anointed me, and this one will kill me. So I guess, I guess I better just go on and stay with the Lord. And that one said to preach, and she, she announced it. Then he tricked me into doing it and put a microphone in my hand. He said, didn't you tell me you're doing anything for me? I said, yes, sir, you're my pastor. I'll do anything for you. We were coming back and putting that sign up over there, that banner in Great Falls. He said, well, you preaching. I, it was a Tuesday or Thursday night we had our services. I forget, but... He said, you preach. And I started shaking. He said, uh-uh, don't you say a word. Don't you say a word. You already said you would. And that's the way, my, that's the way it all began, praise God. But this lady, I love you. Will you sing a song? I'm trying. Thanks. Praise the Lord. Amen. Amen. Are you glad as I am to be here this morning? Amen. Will you put a smile on your face? Come on. I am so glad to be here this morning. Thank God for my pastor. I thank God for the whole church. I don't know if I can sing or not. <laughs> but anyway, I love the Lord this morning. And uh, I just want to tell you that I still have faith. I still serve the Lord. And I still got the Lord. He's on my side. And guess what? I'm on his side. I got word a while back, Brother Larry. I can't even, the Lord don't even let me remember who told me. Somebody else said it and they had to share. You know how people are. They got to share all the bad news somebody's saying about you. You know, to you, make you feel good or something, you know. But it causes more demons to come at you, what it does. Brother Lad, somebody said, Sister Betty must not have no faith no more. She's been in and out of hospitals a lot here lately. She must not have no faith anymore. Well, I got news for you. If it wasn't for my faith in God, I wouldn't be alive today. I would not be here for the CW the last two years. I can't even describe them. It's been so bad. And it ain't been pain and sickness and all that. It's been demonic spirits trying to kill me, take me out. Come on. He said he would. And I said, no, I can live and I'm not going to die. By myself at home, Brother Lad. All through the hours of the night. I have got so bad one time I got down and out and I told her, Lord, just take me home. I am so tired. Will you just please take me home and get me out of here? He wouldn't do it. He wouldn't do it. So I waited on him to come get me, Brother Larry. I lay down and wait to die and I never did. So I praise God and I kept getting calls from Indian Reservation. Sister Betty, we need you. Sister Betty, can you come? We'll come and get you. We'll fly you. We'll come and drive you out here. We'll come and get you. Close your ears, Brother Kenny. I'm booked up for camp meeting in September. Come on. 
They didn't have to beg me either. Sister Betty, count me. Right after Labor Day, we need you. Will you come? I said, yes, I'll come. I'm on my way. I've just got to get better. Well, you're going to get better. Go ahead and have that life surgery, and you're going to be better, and you're going to be dancing and running. We're going to be preaching and traveling. I said, I'll take that. I believe that, Sister Ann. Hey, I'm not but 85 years old. My goodness, I still got a long time yet. I ain't never testified to this, but uh, as a prophet of God, Brother Chuck knows who I'm talking about. He prophesied to me about four years ago, three years ago, in Fernley, Nevada. He said, Sister, the Lord said to tell you you got 20 more years in the ministry. I said, I'll take that. I'll take that. I saw him a couple of years later. Brother Todd, and he said, I still hear that 20 more years for you, sister. So I told the devil a few days ago, hey, I think I got 20 more years from today. Actually, I'll just take it. Come on, church. Many of the afflictions of the righteous, but the Lord delivers them out of them all. I said, Lord, you said you'd heal me. I believe you're healing me. I know you're healing me. Come on, Lord, heal me. <laughs> Let's get it gone. Let's get it done. Let's get and I'm looking for it. I'm, I'm better. I'm better than I was. But I ain't as good as I'm going to be. Somebody said sing. What y'all want me to sing? Anything? Jerry said something. I couldn't hear him. He's the boss, you know. Okay, give me a G, brother. Where, oh, you're going to sit down on me? He knows. Get these women up preaching and talking. He's going to rest a minute. A G. Y'all pray for me. I haven't sung in a while. Amen. Well, I have sung around the house, but... Is that a G? My boat of life Sails on a troubled, troubled sea And always there's some wind Always in my sail But I have a dear Who's always watching over me When that breeze turns into a big gale Sing it with me, Lord I know the master of all the wind I know the maker of all the rain He will calm your storm and cause the sun to shine again I know the master of all the winds Sing it again Sing it like we mean it I know the master of all the winds I know the maker of all the rain He will calm your storm Cause the sun to shine again I know the master of all the wind Sometimes I soar Like that eagle through the sky Way among those peaks My soul can be found In an unexpected storm well, it may drive me from those heights Oh, it may bring me low But it'll never, never, never bring me down You know why, don't you? Cause the sun to shine again I know the master of all the wind Let's do that number two again I love it Sometimes I soar Just like that eagle Through the sky Way among those peaks My soul can be found Hallelujah 
But then an unexpected storm It may drive you from those high It may bring you low But it'll never, never bring me down of all the wind and I know the maker of all the rain he will calm your soul hallelujah cause the sun to shine again I know the master of all the wind he will calm your storm and cause the sun to shine again I know the master of all the wind let's give him praise somebody says. Is that right, Sister Frankie? Amen. Only a number. And the one good thing about age, especially ministry, hallelujah, you don't look back desiring, but you do look how far Amen. the Lord has brought you. Amen. 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 And how many lives and hearts and people that, that you touched over the years. Yeah. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. And, and, and Brother Wayne, if they want to call me old school, I'm old school. <laughs> Hallelujah. But one thing, knowing that God's still moving by His Spirit. Amen. He's still doing great things. Amen. Why don't you give Sister Ann and Brother Ernie a hand as they come this morning? <laughs> Hallelujah. All right. the Lord. Brother Ernie said, please don't make me say nothing. <laughs> say nothing, honey. Say nothing. Amen. Nothing. Praise God. I appreciate him so much. And all of you, I want to say uh, welcome to all our Facebook friends. We had several people write this morning and say that we're going to be watching. So as I preach today, just remember that I'm not just preaching to you all here. We got other folks that are listening, Florida, Georgia, North Carolina, all around. People are watching the services, and they're being blessed by the ministry that's been here this week. What a joy to be here. Praise God. I was coming anyway. I'm like Brother Bell. I, I wasn't going to let anything stop it. I've had it on my schedule ever since Sister Carleen wrote me the dates. And I was coming anyway, but I was so thankful that I have an opportunity to speak for Jesus and lift up his name today. He's a good God. It's brought me a long way, 75 years, almost 76 next month. Brother Ernie's going to be 85 in October, and uh, we're just, um, just getting started. God's opening doors and moving, and uh, my voice is... <clears throat> is wearing out <laughs> amen but uh, my mind wants to sing and do all the stuff i used to do but I, when i open my mouth it don't come out like it used to but i thank the lord for a song in my heart i got a song in my heart how many have a song david said he put a new song in my heart a song of praise and there's miss nana back there she's still just going on worshiping god praising the lord her and her little friend and uh, we're just so thrilled to be around. Look at somebody say, I like old people. You know, all the young people. I think Joey's about the youngest one here. Amen. Who's, uh, who's the youngest person here? Let's see. How old are you, Joey? Brother Ladd said he's the youngest. Amen. Uh, Revelation 21.8, brother. 
Amen. How old are you, Joey? I'm 55. 55. No, not you, Jerry. I know how old you are. Amen. 55. Anybody younger than that? Don't you ask Tammy. How old is Tammy? 54. Well, they're, they're about the two youngest ones here and then, then her little daughters back there. Amen. But most of us are, are just old, you know. <laughs> Let's laugh one time. Come on, everybody. One, two, three. Goody devil, you thought you was going to kill me a long time ago, and I'm still here giving you heart trouble every time I get out of bed in the morning. Every time I get up in the morning, the devil says, oh, no, she's up. <laughs> Amen. Praise God. The Lord is so good. Well, give me an A flat. I think it is. Praise God. We'll try a little course of this. I could mention a lot of people today. I could mention a lot of things. Amen. I could mention names, famous people that I have heard and seen, but there's nobody worth mentioning in here today but Jesus. Hallelujah. Did I mention that I love him? How I worship and adore him. When I can see no way, he makes a way. And did I mention he's been faithful to every promise he ever made me? I love him. That's all I want to say. Can you raise your hand and sing that chorus with me? Oh, did I mention that I love him? How I worship and I adore him. When I can see no way, he makes a way. And did I mention he's been faithful to every promise he ever made me? I love him. That's all I want to say. And there's a roof up above me, and I've got a good place to sleep I got food on my table I got shoes on my feet and you gave me your love Lord and a fine family thank you Lord for your on me let's sing that again be thankful for what you have there's a roof up above me i got a good place a good place to sleep <laughs> oh there's food on my table i got shoes on my feet you gave me your precious love lord and a fine family thank you lord for your blessings on me and i feel jesus i feel jesus how many feel jesus I feel Jesus, he's in this place, and my soul does burn within me, I feel him, I feel Jesus. In this place One more time before I preach Let's sing it 
wave our hands before him this morning thank him for being in this place today hallelujah um thank you guys i appreciate that what good music oh you ought to be so thankful a lot of places we go they have no music <laughs> at all and ernie and i we kind of play around a little bit he bangs the guitar and i bang the piano <laughs> we try to ad lib it you know but uh it's just so good to have talented musicians and anointed musicians. Let's give them a hand this morning. I want to, um, I want to put in a plug for my new book. I have written three devotionals, and they're back there. Honey from the Rock, most of you have them. But if you don't, they are back there available. All three for $40 or 15 each, and we have... Uh, other things on the table, thank you for buying the cakes. I wanted to raise some money and uh, just uh, had something I wanted to do here for Pastor. And I just thank the Lord that you bought the cakes and helped us get it done. Amen. Amen. God is good. Hallelujah. I, um, I want to give you a couple things the Lord shared with me. You can write these down if you need something from God. Everybody, anybody need something from God? Here you go now. If you need something from God, you've got three things you've got to do. Number one is hold on. Number two is hold on. And number three is hold on. <laughs> Profound, right? That's all I could get from God when I said, Lord, I need something from you. He said, hold on. Went back again and prayed. And I said, I need something from you, God. He said, hold on. I went back the third time. He said, hold on. I said, well, that's what we're going to do. We're going to hold on. Is that right? Amen. I like these little Facebook sermons that we get. Facebook is good for something. I haven't found out yet what, but it's good for something. And uh, it, there's a lot of stuff on there that's junk, but there are, every once in a while you get a little nugget. And I like these here. I wrote these down. I, it says, I, a failure that leaves you humble is better than a victory that leaves you proud. Is that right? And, and this is a good one. If the church was not so important, the devil wouldn't try so hard to keep people from coming to it. And how about this one? Don't get so caught up in what people do to you that you forget what Jesus done for you. Isn't that good? Hallelujah. Somebody ought to raise your hand. Nobody's been hurt by the church like Jesus, but he still shows up every time. <laughs> oh, I about shouted on that one. Hallelujah. And this is a good one here. When the prodigal comes home, kill the calf, not the prodigal. <laughs> Worries like a rocking chair. It gives you something to do, but you don't get nowhere. <laughs> Amen. And how about this one? When one is deeply embedded in rebellion, all correction will be labeled an attack. Yeah. Right? Smile somebody. That wasn't funny, but it's the truth. Amen. I'm going to give you a message today that the Lord shared with me a couple weeks ago. And I knew what I was going to preach if I got asked to preach. And I felt this in my spirit. And it's been burning in my soul. And it's, uh, I told brother at the, back there at the back, this is a Neapolitan message. It's got three flavors. We're going to give you some vanilla. <laughs> We're going to get into some chocolate, and then I'm going to top it off with some strawberry. Is that all right? Three flavors. 
pick the one you like, or if you like all three of them, you can go home rejoicing. But we're going we're gonna to talk about some stuff today. Acts 23, 11 is the first scripture we're going to read, just one scripture. Acts 23, 11. Everybody smile one time now. Show me your false teeth. If you drop them, I'll put them back. Praise God. 23, 11. And the night following, the Lord stood by him, this is Paul, and said, Be of good cheer, Paul. For as thou hast testified of me in Jerusalem, so must thou bear witness also at Rome. Look at somebody say that was a promise. But in Acts 27, 20, that promise is looking pretty dim. Acts 27, 20 says, And when neither sun nor stars in many days appeared, and no small tempest lay on us, all hope, everybody say all hope. all hope. All hope that we should be saved was then taken away. But Paul lived through it. And in 2 Corinthians 1.20, he wrote these words. For all the promises of God in him are yea and in him, amen, unto the glory of God by us. Let's read that one again. For all the promises, read it with me. For all the promises of God in him are yea and in him, amen, unto the glory of God by us. Pray with me as I preach the promise. Father, we thank you for your promises. We thank you, Lord, that your promises are true. <laughs> oh, I praise you, God, for keeping your word to us and bringing us to this very moment in this era of time. For we have come into the kingdom for such a time as this. Bless us, Father, minister through us, use us, hide us, God, behind the cross. Let the blood of Jesus flow in here today. Let the word of God come in this place. God, may we draw water out of the wells of salvation with joy and take us to a new height in you. In Jesus' name, amen, somebody. Amen. Now, there's some things that we need to consider at the beginning uh, of this message. First, we're dealing with the promise of God, and we're dealing with the providence of God. Paul had a promise. I read that to you in Acts 23, 11. He had just come through a gruesome trial before the Sanhedrin court, that was the Supreme Court of Jerusalem, the highest court in the land. He had been beaten, he had been falsely accused, and would have been killed, but God was not finished with him yet. But in Acts 23, 11, it says the Lord stood by him. After all of this gruesome things that he had been through. And God said, be of good cheer, Paul. For as thou hast testified of me in Jerusalem, you will also bear witness of me in Rome. Amen. What a promise. After that promise, he was tried before Felix. Then after that promise, he was tried before Agrippa. And then he was put on a ship in chains like a common prisoner. And now we see divine providence beginning to unfold. Providence is defined as the protective care of God. It's God watching over his promises to make sure that everything falls in line so they'll come to pass. And one little definition I've read of providence is simply God is in control. God is in control. Paul is about to see the providence of God defined. He has to do, it, this, this providence has to do with destiny. It has to do with placing oneself in God's hands completely. And Paul was totally leaning on the promise of God and the providence of God. What else could he do? He's in chains. He's on a ship. He's a prisoner. He's got to rely on the promises of God. Acts 27, 1, it says, When it was determined that we should sail into Italy, it was determined that they're going to head now toward Italy. How I many know Rome's in Italy? Could I get an amen here? 
Amen. It was determined. And man thought they made this determination. But this is the providence of God working on the promise of God. It says they, they delivered Paul to a centurion named Julius. And see, Julius thought that he was in control of where that ship was headed. But this was God's providence at work. God was in control. And, and Julius didn't know the word of God. But Paul knew the word of God. He had read the scriptures. He knew that Psalm 37, 23 says the steps of the righteous are ordered by the Lord. Not by Julius, not by the captain of the ship, but they are ordered by the Lord. Paul had read the prophets. He knew that 1 Samuel 2, 9 says the Bible says that he will keep the feet of his saints and the wicked shall be silent in darkness for by physical strength shall no man prevail. Paul knew that. He knew it wasn't his strength that was leading him and guiding him. Paul was a believer in the promises of God and he trusted the providence of God. Paul knew that in Psalm 37, 24, it says the Lord holds his children by the hand. <laughs> Paul knew that many are the afflictions of the righteous, but the Lord delivers us out of them all. Paul was abiding under the shadow of the Almighty. Amen. <laughs> God didn't tell him all he'd go through. But he had a promise. Whatever you do, whatever you're going through, whatever's going on, grab your promise and hold on to your promise. Amen. A promise will keep you when you go through a trial. A promise will keep you in the valley. A promise will keep you when all hell is assailing against you. If you trust the promises of God, the promise will keep you going. Hebrews 6, 19 says, a promise from God is an anchor for the soul. <laughs> Amen. How many anchored in the promise? I feel the Holy Ghost. <laughs> Come on, enjoy this vanilla right now. Lift your hand up and say, yum, yum. That's good. Come on, this is some good stuff. <laughs> it's an anchor for the soul. When Nehemiah built the wall, he was standing on a promise. <laughs> in Nehemiah 5, 19, he had a promise. Every time the hammer hit the wall, he thought about the promise. When the 120 went to the upper room, they were waiting on the promise. Acts 2.39, the Bible said, this same promise is to you, to your children, to them that are afar off, even as many as the Lord our God shall call. Acts 26 and 6, it was hope in God's promise that calls Paul to stand before the court. And now he's on the ship and he's sailing out on his promise. And later in Hebrews 10, 36, he said, For you have need of patience. Then after you have done the will of God, you will receive the promise. Lord have mercy. Paul didn't just write that verse. He walked it out. He lived that verse. He experienced that verse. He was riding out on that verse. And did you know that the word promise is in the King James Bible 214 times? If you can't believe in promises, you might as well throw your Bible away. The Bible is a promise. All the promises of God are yea and in Him. Amen. Hallelujah. In 1886, Russell K. Carter wrote page 329 in the red back hymnal. And it says, I'm standing on the promises of God. Standing on the promises that cannot fail. When the howling storms of doubt and fear assail. By the living word of God I shall prevail For I'm standing on the promises of God Lord have mercy Lift your hand and say I believe I believe the promises Acts 27 3 When you're walking by faith in the promises of God He'll give you some unexpected gifts When you're living by faith He'll bless you The Bible says in Acts 27 3 That God gave Paul favor with Julius. Amen. He treated Paul with thoughtful consideration. He let him go ashore and, and, and visit with his friends and he treated him like a tourist. 
and not a prisoner. Lord have mercy. The man's in chains. His life is at stake. And Junior said, would you like to go ashore and take a shower and change clothes? Come on now. Who gets treated like that in jail? Come on, somebody. Amen. Paul visited with his friends. They cared for him. They refreshed him. And see, God knows that we need each other. God is aware that we get weary and we need a refreshing. And he'll send you to people. And he'll send people to you to uplift you. And when you're feeling down, they'll remind you of the promises of God. They will exhort you and edify you and encourage you. And yes, Paul was anointed. He was a chosen vessel of God. But he still needed to be strengthened by the brethren. He needed that strength. 2 Timothy 1.16 He wrote these words. The Lord give mercy unto the house of Onesiphorus. For he refreshed me often. And was not ashamed of my chain. What does that mean? It means that when Paul got to prison in Rome, Onesiphorus searched every prison in the city until he found the beloved apostle and he sought him diligently and he went in and ministered to him. If Paul needed that, how much more do we need it in our day and time? So when, when you're walking out a promise, when you're riding out the promise and you're in the waiting period, God will give, me, give you refreshment along the way. He'll go ahead of you. He'll send people in your path. He'll have them there to comfort you and to encourage you, to help you hold on to your promise. Amen. In Acts 27, 4, Paul returns to the ship and they set sail. And in verse 6, the Bible said they found a ship and guess where it was headed? Can anybody tell me where it was headed? It was on its way to Rome. The promise is getting closer now, but the closer the promise gets, the harder the devil fights to keep it from coming to pass. In verse 9, Paul got a hold of the anointing and he began to admonish them. And he said, Sirs, I perceive that this voyage will be with hurt and much damage, not only to the ship and its cargo, but our lives are going to be in danger. Look at the word admonished. It's a verb, and it means to reprove, to warn, and to urge. It means to advise and correct. In this scenario on the ship, Paul was warning of the danger. In the spirit, he saw a red flag, and he saw danger signs ahead, and he warned the centurion Julius but verse 11 it said that Julius believed the owner of the ship more than those things spoken by Paul you see Paul was a great voice he was an anointed voice but he wasn't the only voice on that ship the owner of the ship was on there and he had reason for wanting the ship to get to Rome to sail because it was all about his money and his profit and the ship was full of wares and he wanted to take them to Rome and to sell them. He was a greedy man. He was selfish. Amen. He was His, his voice opposed the voice of the servant of God on the way to your promise there'll be a whole lot of voices there'll be a lot of opposing voices they will seek to detour you to hinder you and if you follow them they'll lead you in a direction that will uh, uh, falsely and, and, and negatively affect your promise that's why Colossians 3.16 says, uh, Let the word of Christ dwell in you richly with all wisdom. It says, Teach and admonish one another. A promise can get cold. Did you know that? A promise can grow dim. How many have been waiting on stuff for a while? A promise can get cold. Amen. That's why the Bible says that we need to be admonished. Amen. To hold on to our promise. We need men and women who are full of wisdom. People that get a hold of the anointing. That can get up with the tongue of the learned. And you're just about ready to give up. And you're just about ready to sink. And somebody can speak 
speak a word and all of a sudden that promise will just leap up in your spirit and come alive I feel it happening in here right now come on lift your hand and say I have a promise I have a promise when these other voices and all these other people begin to speak negatively about your promise Amen. They'll have their carnal agendas. Amen. And they'll begin to speak to you. And, and not, but you will know not to hearken to them because you heard somebody say, hold on to the promise. If you don't get nothing else I preach today, you grab a hold of that statement. Hold on to the promise. Hold on to the promise. Oh, yeah. Amen. We want our promises quickly, don't we? Uh -huh. What I say when I preach another message on promises, it just came to my mind. <laughs> Amen. We want to stick it in the microwave and nuke it and just heat it up real quick and get it out and experience it. <laughs> Amen. But we serve a crock pot God, honey. He'll put you on the back burner. Amen. He'll try you and test you. He'll take you through storms and trials. <laughs> and if you hold on to that promise, <laughs> you'll come out victorious. Amen. You're not going to lose the way. <laughs> Amen. We're going to hold on to our promise. Acts 27, 12, the people on the ship uh, began to point out the inconveniences of the place where they were. We need to sail. It's, it's not commodious here to winter. And, and, and you know, there's no entertainment here. Everything's dead in Crete uh, in the winter time. And we need to go somewhere where we can have some nightlife. And come on now, all the prisoners they wanted to leave and all the men on the ship. Uh, amen. And, and the Bible says uh, the majority of them advised to depart. Uh, now let's change flavors and get a little chocolate here. Y'all ready for this? This. We live in an era of time when a lot of the majority of the church has lost sight of the promise. And they're saying, where is the promise of his coming? And multitudes are following the majority. But let me tell you, church, just because the majority says it's right, that don't make it right. Amen. The opinions of men must never override the word of almighty God I refuse to jump on the bandwagon with doctrines of devils I will not join affinity with the crowd that promotes worldly living ungodly places nudity and the new woke agenda amen I will never denounce God's standards of holiness separation and righteous living I'm headed for my promise and if I am to obtain the, my promise I've got to abide by the rules laid down to me when I entered the race I can't let the opinions of the majority move the bar for me the majority believes in abortion the majority is fornicating the majority believes in gay rights amen but I'm not joining the majority I will not walk on the broad way to destruction I will stay on the narrow way I will stay on the way that leads to eternal life Jesus said in Matthew 7 13 many are on the broad way while few are on the narrow way so we know where the majority is headed amen I'm not following the majority come on somebody amen oh lift your hand and thank God you still believe the truth Come on, praise him while I get a drink. Hallelujah. Amen. Like the people on the ship, like Julius the centurion. Amen. Many are listening to the majority. Well, everybody's doing it. Well, that don't make it right. Come on now. Everybody's going there. Well, that don't make it any any better. Everybody's doing this and doing that. Amen. I got to keep my focus. Amen. I got to keep my vision. And I have a vision of walking with Jesus and talking with Jesus. And I got to have my focus on holiness and righteousness. For he is a holy God. 
Come on, say amen. That's another message. I'm not preaching that. It's on my website. Go on there and read it. Amen. Acts 27, 13. It says a soft wind began to blow from the south. The word soft there caught my attention. Amen. That denotes a soothing, calm, pacifying feeling. Amen. Verse 13 says, it caused them to suppose. When the soft wind blew softly, they supposed that it was okay to sail. Amen. They began to assume that Paul was wrong. May I tell you this morning, there is a soothing wind blowing in the church at present. Amen. Money is talking. Popularity is raising its voice. The majority is whispering in the ears of the church leaders all around the world. Worldly fashion is Dressing the church. Boys think they are girls. And girls pretend to be boys. <laughs> One preacher said, men, you can go to a doctor and get cut up. You can go to a fashion designer and get made up. You can go to a drug dealer and get messed up. But when you stand before God, you'll still be a cut up, dressed up, messed up man. Because none of that don't make you a woman. Hey, 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 I feel my helper coming on here. I said none of that will change your gender. God chose your gender. God made you what you are. Amen. God decided if you'd be a male or female. One little boy come home and said, Daddy, I think I'm a cat. I want to be a cat. And his dad said, you're not a cat, you're a boy. He said, my teacher told me I could be a cat. And if I want to be a cat, meow, meow, I'll be a cat. And the dad said, you ain't no cat, you're a boy. And the little boy says, mama, give me a hamburger. And the dad said, hold it, hold it, cats don't eat hamburgers. You want your food? Amen. Go over there. It's in the bowl by the litter box. And that's where you're going to spend the night. Go out to the barn and catch you some rats. Amen. And, he, and the little boy in a couple of days come back and said, Dad, I don't want to be a cat. I don't want to be a cat. What we got is a lot of parents, amen, that won't teach their children right from wrong. And little Johnny and little Susie's name might as well be on the mailbox. Come on, somebody. Where are the parents that'll rise up and say, not in my house, not at my house. You ain't fornicating in my house. You ain't living like that in my house. You ain't living like that here. We holiness in this house. Thank you, Lord. When you defy your gender, amen, you're not defying yourself, you're defying your maker. Amen. The majority screams, my choice, my body. The majority runs around half naked and blind to their own sin. The majority are the blind leading the blind and they'll both fall in the ditch. But I'm being led by the Holy Ghost, amen. He is my God. He is my comforter. Wave your hand and praise him. If you still love me, say amen. Amen. Genesis 1, 27. So God created man in his own image. In the image of God created he him. Male and female created he them. In Mark 10 and 6, Jesus is still preaching that verse. If he preached it, I'll preach it. Amen. Because he's the truth. Acts 27, 13. The soft wind soothed and deceived and fooled the crew. But verse 14 says, Not long after <laughs> not long after there arose a tempestuous wind 
It's called a Eurocladon or a Eurocludon, but it's really uh, defined as a hurricane. Amen. And it was just over the horizon. Amen. Let me admonish us right here. There's danger out there. That world is wicked out there. Amen. The enemy will allure us and soothe us and attract us to his inventions. Amen. But there's a storm on his ocean that he hides from you and the winds of sorrow are waiting right over the hill just to take you under. Amen. There's pleasure that beckons you but it's seasonal. Sin is seasonal. Hebrews 11, 25 says, the pleasures of sin are only for a season. Romans 6, 23 says, the wages of sin is death. Acts 27, 20, darkness enveloped that ship. 276 men on board but the only one that was sailing out on the promise amen there was one man on the ship amen that was sailing on a promise he was walking in the providence of God he would later write and we know that all things work together for good to them that love the Lord amen suddenly after many days without food seasick and storm tossed in verse 20 my text says all hope was lost in the opinion of the majority all hope was lost in the opinion of the majority. Amen. But once again, that power and anointing took a hold of Paul. He didn't care where he was. When it come on him, he spoke. Amen. Chains didn't stop him. Bondage didn't stop him. Amen. The captain of the ship couldn't stop him. Amen. The Bible said in verse 21, he stood forth in the midst of them and with a voice of authority he said men you should have heeded my advice you should not have loosed from Crete amen you should have stayed right where I told you your choice will cause you harm and lost but be of good cheer amen no one on this ship is going to die I'm paraphrasing now but he said I'm headed for Rome I'm walking on a promise. I'm riding on a promise. I can't go under because an angel of God stood by me this night. I'm his. I serve him. And he said, Paul, amen, you're not going to die. Amen. You will be brought before Caesar. And not only that, Paul said, all of you are going to live too. God's going to give you a second chance. Aren't you glad somebody can stand in the gap for you? Verse 25, wherefore, sirs, cheer up. <laughs> cheer up. What are you looking so down about? I mean, you ain't got nothing left. You've already thrown all your wares overboard. <laughs> you thought you was going to get to sell them, but they're swimming in the ocean now. Come on, somebody. <laughs> You ain't got no clothes left. You threw everything overboard. He said, be of good cheer, for I believe God. My Lord, I felt the Holy Ghost when I said that. I wish somebody lift their hands so I believe God. How can I get up here and preach all this? Because I believe God. How can I go on in the midst of the storm? Because I believe God. How can I fight until I'm wore out? Because I believe God. I believe God. You ought to shout that to the top of your lungs. I believe God. I believe God. I'm fanatical about that. I believe God. I'm holding on to my promise. Paul said, I can't go under. I ain't going to drown. I got a promise. Every time the devil comes to me and says, I'm going to kill you, I remind him what Sister Frankie told me about 25 years ago. You're going to preach the gospel in old age. Amen. I ain't old yet. Hallelujah. I'm just getting there, but I ain't there yet. I remember the words that have gone before me all my life. And the devil can't take me down. Amen. Because I got a promise. I believe God. I can't go under I'm going to close with Paul Harvey called the rest of the story. Here's the strawberry. You ready for that? Out of 276 men on that ship, there was a group who would not heed Paul's admonition. After all they'd seen 
After all they'd heard, some people, if somebody raised from the dead, they wouldn't believe God. You know I'm telling the truth. Didn't Abraham tell the rich man that in hell? He said, send, send Lazarus down there to witness to my brothers. And Abraham said, son, if people rose from the dead, they would believe it. They have the law and the prophets. If you can't believe the Bible, amen, the goosebumps ain't going to help you a bit. If you can't go to Genesis 1 and 1 and read in the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth. And believe that with all your heart. When every agnostic is saying that we sprang from monkeys, you can raise your hand and say in the beginning God created the heavens and the earth if you can't believe that verse throw the rest of the Bible out that is our introduction to our creator he introduced himself in the beginning I created the heavens and the earth well that's another sermon too I don't want to preach that amen all these 275 men on the ship amen all of those people there was a group in there after all they'd seen and heard, they were bent on disobedience. Verse 30, the Bible said they tried to flee out of the ship. They pretended to be dropping anchor, and instead they were ready to rebel against Paul's instructions again. Verse 31, in a warning from Paul and from the, this preacher right here today, except these abide in the ship. Amen. They cannot be saved. Amen. He he did he did say they there. Amen. They he he didn't he didn't just mean them, just the ones that were rebelling. He meant that all of the lives on that ship depended on total obedience. By spiritual application, if you jump ship, if you abort your promise, if you go back on God, amen. A lot of people are going to be influenced. They are watching your life. You're the rope that's holding them up. And your prayers, amen, are keeping them from dying and going to a devil's hell. You can't afford to abandon your children, your friends, people you have witnessed to. You got to hold on. Not only your salvation depends on it, but theirs as well. Am I right? You can't afford to give up. Lift your hand and say, I can't afford it. Amen. Other lives are at stake besides yours. You got to abide in the ship. You got to stay on board even when the storm is raging. You got to stay on board when it looks like you're going under. In John 8, 31, Jesus said, If you continue in my word, then are you my disciples indeed. And you shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. Matthew 24, 13, he said, He that shall in endure unto the end the same shall be saved that's just another way of saying you got to abide in the ship come on somebody I mean that's what Paul was saying James 1 and 12 blessed is a man that endureth temptation for when he is tried he shall receive a crown of life hallelujah it's about enduring ladies and gentlemen it's about putting up with their looks it's about putting up with their rejection it's about standing for the truth even whenever one of them want to sail you say don't lose from Crete stay here amen come on somebody I'm getting ahead of myself Acts 27 after all of Paul's warnings in verse 42 the Bible said the counsel of the soldiers was to kill the prisoners <laughs> here's the providence of God now here's the promise but verse 24 God had said nobody on board this ship is going to die is that right? Amen. Not one person is going to die. The Bible said in verse 43, old Julius finally got it. He loved Paul, and he's now sorry that he had listened to the owner and loosed from Crete. He told, he took control, and all of a sudden now he's a commander again. He takes authority now. The Bible said he rose up and he said, no, all of them's going to live. Long story short, verse 44, every one of them came to land and live. Not one soul was lost. 
Amen. God is a God of second chances. You're looking at somebody that said a second, a third, a fourth, a fifth, and a sixth, and I can't count them all. Amen. I've had a lot of chances. Amen. God still got the ark door open, and the ship is still available, and you can get on board. Let me give you five points in this message, just real short here. Number one, listen to the right voice. Shut out anyone or anything that is not in line with the word of God. Do not be influenced by the majority. They are desensitized to conviction. And when they sin, it don't bother them. <laughs> Amen. And you need to pray every day for God to keep your conscience sensitive to the Holy Ghost. <laughs> and when you do anything that's contrary to scripture, ask the Lord to let you feel the conviction of the Holy Ghost. Because as long as you can feel that conviction, your conscience is not seared and you are savable. Hallelujah. Lift your hand and say conviction. Number two, remember there's a storm out there. And if you don't want to, and if you want to stay safe, you need to stay in the church. No, it's not perfect. Oh, yeah. It's got hypocrites in it. It's got pretenders in it. Amen. But it's safer than the cesspool of sin. I'd rather be sitting in here, brother. Amen. I'd rather be right here. Don't lose from Crete. Amen. Stay right there. It's not glamorous, but it's safe. Number three, heed the admonitions of your shepherd. If he warns you, take it seriously. Hebrews 13, 17 says, Obey them, submit to them. Why? Because they watch for your soul. Amen. They were put over you to look for the pitfalls. And they are your CNI dog. They are your GPS. They'll guide you. 1 Corinthians 11, 1. Paul told the sheep in Corinth, Be ye followers of me, even as I also follow Christ. As long as your shepherd is following the word of God, imitate him follow him do like he does amen he may like cabbage and you may not like it ain't got nothing to do with the appetites of the flesh but if he tells you stop doing that don't do that don't go there don't listen to that obey him he's on his knees for you he's been in touch with the father and he's seeking God for your preservation number four if you do listen to the wrong voice and you get on the wrong boat, turn around. You can repent. Amen. God didn't move. You did. He's right where you left him. And when you come back, he'll run down the walk and he'll throw his arms around you. He'll welcome you back without any condemnation. Amen. He'll give you an okay. He'll give you a high five. And he'll say, welcome home. Amen. I've been waiting on you to come back. You messed up, but you didn't give up. You come back. Come on, there's a big difference in messing up and giving up. I've messed up, but thank God I ain't never give up. I wish somebody shout yes. Amen. And number five, quickly hold on to your promise. Come give me some music. Hold on to your promise. If God said he'd do it, he'll do it. Hold on to your promise. That's the line I want you to get in this message. I preached a lot of stuff. Maybe I preached too long. I don't know. But I want to tell you. Hold on to the promise. Five words. Come on, say, hold on to the promise. Did God promise you he'd heal you? Hold on to the promise. Did God promise you he'd raise you up? Hold on to the promise. Did God promise he'd meet your need? Hold on to the promise. Did God promise that he'd give you direction? Come on, hold on to the promise. Brother Ernie and I are in right now in a time when we're just holding on to the promise. We don't know what the future holds. We don't know what to do. We went to sleep last night holding hands, singing, I still trust you, Lord. 
Come on. That was a message God sent to us last night through Brother Jeff. I still trust you, Lord. I haven't given up trusting you, Lord. I'm holding on to my promise. Brother Bobby Bell told us the other night, he said, I see you in a long valley. I see you in a valley that's long and deep. And he said, there's a giant in that valley, but you're going to bring that giant down because you're going to wait on God until God gives you direction. I laid on the bed yesterday and I said, God, what kind of valley are we in? It's not a financial valley. It's not a physical valley. What kind of valley are we in? And the Holy Ghost came in my bedroom so sweetly yesterday, right in that little motor home. And he said, you are in the valley of decision. You are walking through decision time. And it's hard sometimes to find the way. But I am the Lord your God. And I told you that the giant is coming down. And you will be able to make the right decision. Somebody in here is in that valley with me. You're in the valley of decision. Jump up on your feet right now and say, I'm going to hold on to my promise. I'm going to hold on to my promise. Numbers 23, 19 says, God is not a man that he should lie. Neither the son of man. Sister Tootsie, the Holy Ghost is speaking to your heart this morning. You're holding on with all you got. <laughs> you got the tenacity of a bulldog. <laughs> You're saying to God right now, I'm holding on to my promise. I'm not giving up. I don't know what you're waiting on today. Amen. But Titus 1 and 2 says God cannot lie. The end is approaching and there's a hurricane of epic proportion that is facing our nation. The economy is about to fall. I'm telling you right now there's storms on the horizon and if we ever needed boldness in the church we are tired of wimps and sissies and penny preachers who won't tell the truth come on somebody we need boldness I want everybody in here that wants to be bold and stand for God I want you to get out of your seat and come stand right here in front of me come with your hands up come with your eyes up to heaven come on if you run over somebody it won't matter just come on and stand right here and say I want to be a bold my God is a promise keeper he's a way maker <laughs> He's a light in the darkness. <laughs> Amen. He's a promise keeper. Let's hold on to our promise. I want you to make some, renew your vows to God right now. Re, just renew yourself to God. Lord, I promised you I'd serve you. Lord, sometimes the going gets rough. Sometimes the shadows appear. Sometimes it feels like I'm not going to make it. But I thank you for your promises. Could you say that to God right now? God, I thank you for your promises. All your promises are yea and amen. Every promise he made is based on the finished work at Calvary. Jesus said it is finished. That means, brother, that it's sealed until the day of redemption. I'm holding on to my promise. God said he's going to help me. Amen. I don't, I don't do much prophesying this morning. But I want to tell you right now, there's some people in here. you got a hold of this word today. And it's going to help you when the valley comes. Hold on to the promise. You're going to Rome, Paul. You're not going under. You're going to witness for me in Rome. And I will keep you in the hurricanes of life. I'll keep you in disobedience. I'll keep you when you fail. I'll keep you when you ride the wrong ship. I'll keep you when you make the wrong choices. I'll bring you back to the shore. And I'll rather tell you, I feel the Holy Ghost in here. I want somebody to pray for boldness right now. God, give me boldness. God, I want to be bold as a lion. I want to be bold as a lion. Unchanging hand Oh, to his hand oh, To God Unchanging hand Oh, be your heart 
hopes Woo! things he turned up oh, to God's untrained. I don't know this man right here. I don't know him. Will you come over here and pray for him? You know him. Right here, this man right here. I feel like God spoke to you this morning. Amen. I believe he's going to do something in your life. <laughs> I don't know what you're going through or what you've been through, but I know God said to pray for you. <laughs> Hallelujah. Holy Ghost, you know what's wrong with him. You know what he needs. You know what's wrong, God. You know the valley that he's in. You know, God, the struggle. You know what's going on. Bless him, God. Fill him, Holy Ghost. Let the Holy Ghost speak out of him right now. That's a Holy Ghost, sir. That's the Holy Ghost right there. Hey, hey, hey. That's the Holy Ghost fell on him. Come on, praise him, sir. Praise him. It's been a long time since you felt the power of God like you feel it right now. But God said this is the beginning. He's bringing you out. He's bringing you up. And you're not going under. You're going to make it. Hallelujah. You're going to make it. Somebody praise him. Oh, holy. Oh, you God unchanged. Sing it again, brother. Wait your hand way up there. Oh, hold on to the promise. To God's unchanging hand. of the Holy Ghost right now. That Holy Ghost, Holy Ghost, Holy Ghost. Fill her again and again and again and again. Fill her vessel up. Fill her vessel up. Out of your belly shall flow rivers of living water. My God, I thank you for it, Jesus. I thank you for it. Hallelujah. Amen. God's going to move down through your legs. God's going to move through your legs right now. In the name of Jesus. Strength. Strength in the lower back. Strength in the legs. In Jesus' name. Praise Him, Mama. Praise Him. Praise Him for the joy of the Lord is your strength. The joy of the Lord is your strength. Unchanging. I'm going to build. Build your hopes. Turn around and tell her, I got refilled with the Holy Ghost. <laughs> she got another infilling. <laughs> I saw it when it fell on you. And it fell on you right out of heaven. <laughs> Woo! <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> oh, yes, Lord. She must have needed it. <laughs> God finds every little corner in our vessel. He sees a little corner in there, he can give it another shot of B12. All right. Come on, praise him, somebody. Build your hopes on things eternal. Unchanging. One more time, Brother Kenny, let's sing it. I'm gonna hold. To God, unchanging hand. Hallelujah. Unchanging hand. Come on, hold on. Go ahead, rejoice. Come on, somebody, lift your hand and say, I need a fresh infilling. I need a fresh infilling. It's falling in here like gentle rain. 
It's falling in here. <laughs> oh, come on, somebody. <laughs> Amen. It's falling. Let it fall on me, Jesus. <laughs> Let it fall. Let the Holy Ghost from heaven fall on me. <laughs> Let it fall on me, Jesus. Things eternal. gonna hold on to your promise today how many got this word today did you like the vanilla the chocolate or the strawberry all the flavors you liked all the flavors this means I need to go to Florida and preach this sermon again to somebody else come on somebody <laughs> amen I might I add a little butter pecan on the next one. amen that's my favorite amen <laughs> I'm telling you, God spoke this message to me two weeks ago in Kentucky. He said, if, if you go to Tabernacle and you preach, that dean, he, peeled, he pulled a fast one on me. He, he really hurt my feelings. He didn't put me on the post. He forgot me. And I was looking at the poster and I said, I ain't on there. I better call Pastor Kenny. And while I was talking to Pastor Kenny, Brother Dean called me and said, Sister Ann, I don't know how in the world I forgot you, but I left you out. I said, well, you get right back down there and put me on there because I'm coming. I love y'all so much. Y'all are my family. Ernie and I, we love them, don't we, honey? And I know, I know, and I'm going to say this. Please forgive me. But I know I preach a little tough sometimes. I understand that. I'm not apologizing for that. But somebody has got, we have got to stand up as evangelists and carry the message of holiness around the world. We've got to. For without holiness, we will not see the Lord. And we cannot be involved in all this worldly junk and please God. I'm riding on my promise and I want to see Jesus. I want to see him. Why? Because he died for me. And when I see Jesus, it's going to be worth it all. Sing a chorus of that, Kenny. I want to see Jesus for he died for me. I want to see his nail scarred hand. I want to see I don't know how to sing it. You're the singer. <laughs> His eyes of mercy watched on me when I strayed. I was nail scarred. Yes, God. My sins away. I want to thank Him for. drop of blood flowed from Calvary I want to see Jesus oh sing it again let's praise him look up those eyes of mercy watched over me when I got on the road and I strayed I want to thank him for I want to thank him for Each drop of blood From Calvary I want to see Jesus For he died for. Oh, to look upon those eyes of mercy Let's sing it To, to look into those eyes of mercy that watched over me when I strayed. I want to see his nail scarred hand. Then it washed my tears away, my tears away. I get it right. 
I want to thank him for each drop of blood that flowed from Calvary. I want to see Jesus for each other. My God, I feel the Holy Ghost. Let's praise him up to look into those eyes of mercy that watched o'er me when I strayed. I want to see those nail-scarred hands that Jimmy brushed my tears away. I want to thank him for every drop of blood that flowed from Calvary. I want to see Jesus for he died for you. Oh, come on, you can do better than that. Honor the Lord. Put those hands together. Amen. Isn't it wonderful to be able just to come and open your heart up and the Lord just fill it up. Amen. The Word of God. Hallelujah. Nothing like it, isn't it? Hallelujah. <laughs> Look around, somebody said, it's camp meeting. That word might be old-fashioned to some folks. Hallelujah. But to me... Hallelujah. The Lord spoke it to me a long time ago. It's important for God's people to meet together. Hallelujah. He even had it as he told Moses, there was three times you're going to have to meet with me. Hallelujah. Not just your local assembly. And hearing my voice. Anybody believes the Lord spoke to us this morning? Come on, slip that hand up and say, thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. We might think that's Old Testament, but I'm telling you, God still needs his people. To... Hallelujah. There's still a Pentecost. Amen. There's still a tabernacle. And we surely celebrate the Passover, do we not? Hallelujah. So I love him tonight. I'm thankful. I'm thankful. I'm thankful. I'm thankful. Hallelujah, because see what Pentecost is all about is the impartation of God's Word. It's we're given with. Hello? So I'm thankful today. How about you? Sometimes we just see it as a meeting, but it's more than a meeting. It's an end game of God's people. I love you. Did you enjoy Sister Ann this morning? <laughs> Hallelujah. God, he's been speaking to us all week. Amen. We got one more service tonight. Amen. And we're going to watch the Lord just explode. Hallelujah. You know, folks that are really serious about, and, and a lot of folks work and can't come in. Hallelujah. In the morning services. But I'm telling you, some of the greatest impartations have come. Hallelujah. Glory to God. When our hearts are fresh, I love morning services. I love to get up on Sunday morning. Hallelujah. It's a freshness. Hallelujah. If you're going to give me a time to preach, let me preach Sunday morning. Let me preach in the morning. Everybody likes it at night, but I, I love morning. Hallelujah. I love for the Lord to just <laughs> fresh. I love to walk out and see the dew on the ground. Yeah. Amen. Amen. It's not a water that, hallelujah, that you turn your windshield wipers on. And sometimes when it appears, it, it, it appears. It's not there one minute, and then the next minute, there it is. Hello. I love it. Well, we're going to eat this morning. <laughs> and we appreciate you. Amen that you are here thankful that God's 
got you right here. And I appreciate every minister and hallelujah uh, that, that's been a part of this thing. And where you've been up here or down there, you've been a part of it. When you walked in the door, your anointing added to and that corporate anointing is what ministers. Hallelujah. Amen. Glory to God. So let's pray. Father, we are thankful. We're thankful. We are thankful, Lord. We're thankful, God, hallelujah, that you're speaking to our lives. And as we minister unto you, Lord, hallelujah, glory to God, hallelujah, hallelujah, you continue to feed our hearts, give us direction, open us up to who you are. And so we praise you. Thank you for the ministry that is ministered here. Hallelujah. Glory to God. So strand this morning. Thank you, God, that the Lord, that you're going to pour it out everywhere they go. And every person that comes in and fills up, God, hallelujah, there's going to be water and it's going to take place all through this country because of those that have drawn it in, hallelujah, and allowed the Word of God to be a part of their lives. So we give you praise. We give you glory and we give you honor. We ask you to sanctify the food. Thank you for all the hands that have worked so hard. Hallelujah. Glory to God to bless this people. And so we give you praise for it in Jesus' name. Amen.